Okay, so here is the CoreFlow Manager interface. So currently we're on the CoreFlow Designer page, which is essentially uh, a essentially a workflow. Um, so let's go ahead and create a, a new one. So we'll call that Demo1. And we will grab a number um, from the unassigned numbers range. So what I can do is I can jump down here and unassigned second we should get some unassigned numbers back right so i can select that and grab it and we'll pop it here okay and there we have it we've got a number um ultimately this will pre-search for you so you don't have to come down here and do it um, but for now the search functionality is at the bottom of of each page um, so other things you could do is you could you could search um a workflow for example you might want the um, SIP address to use um, in, the, in the queues for example so I could search the workflow I've now got the SIP address there I can copy it out um, and if I was in queues for example I could paste that in um, as a, a destination SIP address for an overflow or um, timeout okay so we'll just jump back up here and we'll grab that number and pop it into the display number we'll assign a pull um, we will give it a SIP address of demo1 and we'll assign the uh, domain, uh, the SIP domain. We'll give ourselves a language and a welcome message. Okay, and we'll just give it a time zone. We're on base here in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, and what we can do is now tr track down to the bottom here and we'll, we're just going to create a basic uh, workflow at this stage so not an IVA, you can see over here IVR mode is actually turned off I'm creating a basic one, let's give it a music file okay there we go so that's pretty much all we need to fill out so let's just go ahead and save that okay so that's saved Right, so what else might we want to do? We might want to assign uh, business hours or we might want to assign um, some holidays. So let's first do business hours. So right now we have a couple defined. Um, but what if we've forgotten to add some business hours and we want to um, add some different ones in here in there right now? Um, a common problem for me in the uh, native tools is that I jump into workflows, start creating it and then realize, ah, haven't created a queue, I haven't created business hours, so I'd have to jump out go into PowerShell, create those things, maybe go into the Skype for Business link control panel, um, create some queues, and then I'd have to come back to the workflow um, interface and refresh the page, and then I'd be able to, to create it. So in this, in CoreFlow Manager's case, that's not a problem anymore. Okay, so let's jump over to the Business Hours tab now and create our Business Hours. Okay, so let's just call this business hours uh, make sure that we put it into the same pool as the workflow will be in otherwise it won't be made available to us okay and let's add that okay so now we've got a empty container here that we can put business hours into um, so we've got some predefined time ranges as well as individual days here so we've got Monday to Friday Monday to Saturday and Monday to Sunday as those predefined ranges we're gonna go Monday to Friday uh, 8 to 5, that's fine, let's add those in, okay, so you can see there we've got Monday to Friday here, 8 to 5 for all of those. Um, I could also individually go and specify, say, Saturday, and we may have shorter hours on Saturday, and I could go ahead and add those in. Okay, so let's save that now, okay, and we'll jump back over to the designer, and any minute now, that should pop into this list, there you go, there's the demo business hours we just created, so we can now select that. Um, we could select an audio file, say after hours, there we go. Okay, and for the purpose of the demo, we'll just disconnect. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that one. Okay, so you can see how easy it is just to add um, a forgotten item. You can do that for business hours, you can do that for holidays, um, and you can do that for queues as well. So if you forget any of those, you can just jump into these tabs, create the item, and then come back here and it will pre-populate that for you. So let's just have a quick look at um, holidays. So 
Let's enable holidays. Let's give it a audio file. Uh, we'll leave that at disconnect for now. Um, and again, we've got one defined there, but we want to specify a new one. So what we can do, very similar. Um, let's go demo holidays. Uh, again, make sure it's in the same pool. Let's add that. We've got our container now. So let's add Christmas for, for an example. Uh, jump up to the 25th. Well, that's going to be seen on the following day. Um, and end 26. So that's that's the entire day, right? day um, from midnight to just before midnight at the end of that day. Let's add that in. Okay, and we will save that. Okay, the other thing we could do, because holidays usually entail um, adding quite a few items. So another thing we can do is we can actually bulk import those. So if I just click download CSV file, pop that on the desktop, and we'll go demo. Okay, there it is. Let's open that up. So right now I've got some pre-populated items in there that you can see there. Um, the CSV will, will point to this and we'll, we'll add basically two groups, bulk add one, bulk add two, and we'll add the same holidays to each of them. So let's just go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we click bulk add, we've got our CSV ready, and we've added all our holidays that we want. We uh, open. And you can see here we've got bulkhead one and bulkhead two. So those are now populated for saving. So while that's happening, we'll jump back to the designer. Um, we should now have our demo holidays that we created. There you go. Okay, so we can now select that and we're good to go. So let's save that. So while that's, that's saving, we can actually come down here now and we might actually want to turn this from a basic workflow into an IVR. So we can actually do that with the flick of a button. Let's turn it on. Let's grab an audio file for that. Uh, if we can find one. Here we go. So that's the root of the IVR. Let's put that in there. Okay. So what we can do now is we can just add a few options. Okay, and we can give them DTMF responses, like so. Um, and let's just add one more than four, um, just so we can see that we can do more than the four that we're restricted to um, in the native interface. So where it says here voice response required, that's not entirely true. So uh, we will fix that um, in a later release. But for now, let's just some things in here. Um, perception, um, I don't know, dial by name. We might want to transfer that to UM uh, for an IVR. Let's just select uh, some cues for this. Okay, there we go. Right, so we've got five options now. Um, but additionally, what we might well want to do is we might want to add a sub option so I can do that. Um, that gives me this additional interface here so I can now select the audio uh, for that option. So we'll put a test audio file in there. Um, so when I press one, it's going to play this audio file um, and then these are going to be the, the valid options. So again, I can add more. Um, I can do more than the four. I can go up to, to 10 of those. Um, let's just do three for argument's sake, um, and grab the cues. All right, okay, so now we've created an IVR, okay. We were using a uh, transfer straight to a queue, but now we're adding options. Okay, so I can just jump up here and save that now. Okay, that's saved. And... There you go, so what I'll just show you as well is I've got a pre-configured one. So here's um, here's our demo IVR here. If I go down here, you can see very similarly, 
Um, we've got six root options and then the support option has five other options within it. So that's how simple that is. Um, if you were using the native tools, there'd be a few places you would be jumping around. Um, so firstly, you'd have to jump into the Skype the business control panel. You'd need to create your groups. Okay, you'd need, need to create your queues. Um, you'd need to do that before you get to the workflow stage. Likewise, if you needed business hours, um, I've got an example here, um, you'd need to create your time range, um, assign the hours to it, um, and also similarly um, holidays. So you'd need to make sure that those things were done first. Then you jump into here. Okay, so this opens a third interface. Alright, so you then create either your standard hunt group, as we saw, um, in Coreflow Manager, or an interactive one, which I've called IVR mode. Okay, so let's just show you, if I create uh, interactive, let's go into this, this one here. So this is the one we've actually just created, the demo. Okay, so you can see here right away, because we've now got more than four responses, um, we, we can no longer edit this within um, the native interface. Okay, so jumping back out, if I go new, I'll just show you what that looks like. If we come down to the bottom here. So there's predefined responses essentially. So response one, two, three, and four. Okay, and if we look at one as an example, um, you can see again predefined one to four within response four. So we're quite restricted in that regard. Okay. So that's just a bit of a, a look at, at how you would do it in the, the native tools. Um, okay, so we haven't looked at cues yet. So that's pretty stock standard, looks very similar. Um, basically create your queue, add some agents to that queue. You can order them. Um, again, groups, very similar to the native tool. Um, create your group, add users to the group. Um, again, uh, like you can in the Coreflow Designer tab, if you start pre-populating a queue and realize you haven't created the group, you can jump into the group, create the group, and it will become pop uh, populated over here for you to use. Um, okay, so that's that's the main uh, workflow um, or response group um, management um, things, I guess, that you would use. Um, some additional things that, that I've added um, are numbers, for one. So as I mentioned, what that does um, is it pulls in all of your assigned numbers um, and also looks at your unassigned number ranges. Um, and compares the two and, and basically creates um, a, a table of, of assigned and unassigned numbers. So you can see there's a workflow there, there's a user, uh, and that one's unassigned. Um, and if you need to, you can search those. 